Hello and welcome back to another session on uh, women's writing in English. Let's uh, continue with the analysis of uh, Laura, uh, the garden party. Um, so Scott's death has in fact astonished everyone and from this we also get to know the difference in attitude uh, of both the sectors, both in the higher class represented by M Mr. Sheridan and the uh, working class represented by the gold, uh, by the um, by the gold. Uh, by the god uh, god birds men hmm. so uh, here in uh, the higher from the higher strata you have laura or the god birds man is just the reverse of laura right so he, he behaves like the rich because he's associated with the rich he's just an employee and laura has sympathy for the poor and she however is not at all she is not associated with the poor but she feels for the poor so uh, the god was man is just a reverse of laura okay so we see the difference in attitude in both the sectors and as the other servants they are able to empathize with uh, the scots family because they know the pain and suffering you also find joe's attitude which is very much similar to mrs sheridan okay and um, Laura uh, is also uh, astonished uh, at the attitude of her mother because Mrs. Sheridan sees them as an eyesore. She, as we said earlier, she goes only for the uh, outer uh, appearance. Uh, it's all about the high class society and the working class are seen as pathetic uh, beings lowly beings who doesn't even have the right to exist in this world so she looks at them in that uh, way Joe's is incapable <coughs> of feeling uh, pity for the poor workers uh, even though her family relies on the servants from the same class uh, she does she's not sympathetic towards them she doesn't feel the pity for them and uh, not just that she also looks at these poor working class or the the the, the neighbors uh, she thinks of the cottages ugliness mm, and this ugliness makes the them and the cottages valueless they have no value at all um, <coughs> But Laura's previous exploration of the cottages shows her boundless curiosity about the ways of life beyond her. She expects Mrs. Sheridan to exercise better judgment than Joe's. Uh, and there, that is the reason why she rushes or runs to uh, her mother uh, at this point of the story. She runs to her mother. She thinks that uh, Mrs. Sheridan will sympathize or will give a better judgment than Joe's. Joe's who is very snobbish. She feels that Joe's is very snobbish. To Laura's astonishment however, once Mrs. Sheridan realizes death wasn't in the garden, she has no more sympathy for the Scott than Joe's does. She is amused, suggesting that the Sheridans have no reason to worry about the Scots. In fact, Mrs. Sheridan suggests that the true accident was merely their hearing about Scott's death. It's not the real accident that happened, but it's just an accident. It is accidental that they heard of this sad news or they heard of this fatal news. Suddenly, Mrs. Sheridan puts her hat on Laura's head and tells her she looks such a picture. Such a picture means such a beauty. And she offers a hand mirror. Laura refuses to be distracted, but Mrs. Sheridan, running out of patience, calls her daughter unsympathetic. Now look at how the word unsympathetic is used here. Who is unsympathetic now? It's a kind of, you know, uh, uh, 
uh, you know, it, it looks very paradoxic, right? Unsympathetic for planning to spoil everybody's enjoyment at the party. And what about Laura? Laura feels that they are unsympathetic towards the feelings of those of the of uh, the ones uh, who are less fortunate, especially when they are in mourning, when they are grieving. A death has taken place, and having a band and a party looks or seems to her unsympathetic. But to Mrs. Sheridan, it's not like that. To Mrs. Sheridan, unsympathetic because she is ruining Laura's attitude is ruining the enjoyment of the party of everyone at the party Mrs. Sheridan just like Joe's only looks out for her family's welfare and paints the Sheridan as the true victims of Scott's death it's not the family who is being affected by Scott's death it is uh, Sheridan's family who is being affected by, the, by Scott's death because they have to cancel the party or rather not they have to cancel the party they, they have hmm, a funeral which has in fact uh, spoiled the fun mood of the party or it has rained on their parade, slightly rained on their parade. Uh, Mrs. Sheridan snaps back into an emo emotionless stoicism. See, in the beginning, when Laura comes to tell her about the death of uh, the, the death that had happened, she immediately responds, "Is it in the garden?" Okay, she's emotional there. She's she's struck. She's emotional. She is uh, horrified and shocked. But the moment she hears that it's not in the garden. An emotional, emotionless stoicism uh, comes back uh, uh, when she realizes the, the worker's death has not tainted her perfect garden. So, who is un unsympathetic here? No? Hmm? The narrator does not tell us anything, it just leaves it to the readers to think. Or through the, through the beautiful picturization uh, uh, of Mrs. Sheridan, we get to have that understanding of how the rich snobbish class looks at or behaves uh, at the less fortunate people. Laura is worried that the guest's enjoyment will spoil, spoil the Scots mourning process. They are grieving. But Mrs. Sheridan suggests that Scott's death will spoil everybody's enjoyment of the party. Laura's disappointment with her, with her mother's lack of sympathy escalates the tension between them and that has been building in the story so far. Mrs. Sheridan's continued attempts to control the party despite her request to be treated as a guest can be seen throughout the novel, right from the beginning, her dominant nature. Even though she keeps saying, I, I, don't, I am not uh, going to interfere yeah, and you are supposed to do it. She tells the children that it's high time that you take up the party and you take up uh, charge of everything. Uh, she keeps interfering. Her dominance is very well uh, seen. The hat is another example or uh, another of these attempts. Mrs. Sheridan tries to distract Laura from her concern by pointing out how beautiful she looks in that hat. Laura storms out and heads to her bedroom where she accidentally glimpses herself in the mirror wearing her mother's hat. She is surprised by how charming she looks and begins to, begins to change her mind about stopping the party. So suddenly she is happy. She looks at it. So it's, it is a kind of distraction. So how um, how easily uh, Mrs. Sheridan can manipulate uh, things? Hmm? She is surprised by no, sorry. She thinks of Mrs. Scott, Mr. Scott's family, but suddenly it feels blurred. It feels unreal, like a picture in the newspaper. She decides to forget about it until the party is over and she goes to lunch. For the first time in the story so far, Laura actively disobeys her mother by refusing to look at herself in the hand mirror and leaving to her bedroom. See, in, that, in the, in the uh, section where uh, Mrs. Sheridan hands over the mirror to her, 
to look at it. She's trying to distract it. So for, it's for the first time that she actively disobeys her mother and she rushes to the bedroom. But then she accidentally sees herself wearing the beautiful hat uh, exactly as her mother intended a few sentences before. Uh, and suddenly you have her transforming back to that class conscious uh, self. Hmm? Like, just like Mrs. Sheraton. As soon as she begins to act on her principles and break away from her mother's control, in other words, Laura gets drawn, back, drawn straight back into Mrs. Sheridan's plan to undermine her independence. So, the, what happens here? So, what happens here is uh, Mrs. Sheridan is trying to control her children in all ways. She is dominant. And she wants to control even the way they behave, the way they uh, think. She does not allow the identity of her children to form. She entrusts or she thrusts upon them her identity. Okay. And if you see uh, Laura... Laura is for, for the first time she actively disobeys her mother by refusing to look at herself in the mirror, in the hand mirror that was given to her by Mrs. Sheridan. Okay, uh, but she and, and then she refuses uh, to sorry and she leaves, storms out of the bedroom. But then when she gets to her bedroom, she has a hat on her head. And she accidentally looks into a mirror and she forgets everything. So, indirectly also, Mrs. Sheridan has a big hand over her. She is controlling emotionally, sometimes physically, sometimes emotionally, over her, her children. Okay. So, uh, this, when you for a short moment or at least for a short period you see uh, Laura break away from her mother's control but again she gets drawn back straight back into Mrs. Sheridan's plan again indirectly though mm? and her freedom or independence is again undermined Okay, so you see the workings of the Marquee and the Karaka trees. The Marquee is obstructing the view of the Karakas, the Karaka trees. Okay, so that's how I, that's why I said um, the symbol, how it works as a symbol here. Mm -hmm. So just after Mrs. Sheridan calls Laura a picture in the hat, Scott transforms into a picture when Laura sees herself in the mirror. When she refocuses on outward appearances, chasing beauty rather than morality, Laura forgets her concern for the Scots or for the Scots' well-being and her anger at her mother's passive aggression control in both cases just like now look at the word oh, what a picture you look like a picture or oh, a lovely picture oh, meaning you look lovely mrs sheridan calls laura picture in the hat so that also suddenly when she calls laura picture in the hat you have scott transforming into a picture a picture in the sense it becomes more like a newspaper article when you read of those incidents, tragic incidents had happened in the newspaper than seeing it for yourself, it does not affect you, right? It does not emotionally affect you. There is a gap there, right? So just like that here, when she says, when uh, mother calls her a picture, a lovely picture, Scott transforms into a picture in the sense that there is a gap now. There is a distance. Just like one reading about a tragic incident in the newspaper. And suddenly, Laura refocuses on the outward appearance. 
she goes behind beauty rather than morality she forgets completely uh, about the scots family's well being she decides to have fun in the party and she also forgets her mother's passive aggressive control over her she try sometimes tries to she wants to break free she wants to have her own identity revealed or she wants to have her identity expressed she does not uh, she doesn't want her mother's control she tries to break free from it but certain times she falls back for it uh, she falls you know back into it and here suddenly when she looks at herself in the mirror she looks very beautiful she forgets everything even her mother's passive aggressive control okay so this word pic picture loses all the emotional depth not a picture hmm? how lovely so the picture the word picture again stands as a very important symbol an outward appearance is everything so mrs sheridan is an epitome of that and this when she understands that she looks really pretty in the new hat hat again a symbol for extravagance uh, luxury she forgets or she loses all her emotional depth okay soon they have lunch the band sets up in the corner of the tennis court and uh, uh, kitty maitland remarks that they look like frogs in their green outfit the band and she uh, she humorously says that they should have been centered around in the pond and the conductor the musician uh, standing in the middle lori returns from the office and heads in, inside to get dressed lora suddenly remembers scott and heads inside to ask his opinion but decides not to mention it when he when he uh, you know compliments her uh, on her hat so mansfield catherine mansfield uses kitty maitland and lori's exaggerated personalities to satirize the presumptuousness of the sheridans and their social class lora remains in the line with her family's superficiality but she does briefly remember the car driver's death when she sees lori in work clothes which suggests that the same powerful beauty that mrs sheridan used to coax her daughter into agreement can also give lora a way out of her family's mindset hmm. however lora decides not to mention scott when lori compliments her hat with which represents her family's value triumphing over her consciousness yet again so kitty may uh, kitty uh, lora's friend and lori both their exaggerated personalities they is used to satirize the presumptuousness of the sheridans and their social lot okay hmm and here you will also find that outer beauty is uh, very important okay outer beauty decides or outer beauty stands for exaggeration outer beauty stands for uh, extravagance not not exaggeration extravagance and luxury the party begins guests arrive stroll around the garden and they compliment laura who glows with joy and helps greet the attendees she asks her father if the band can take drinks or uh, can get drinks suddenly the party is over and laura and mrs sheridan bid the guests good bye mrs sheridan declares that the party was successful but complains that she's exhausted because her children insists on giving parties see the way she says the family uh, sits in the market now so catherine mansfield uh, beautifully um, describes sheridan's party flashes mm. unlike laura who can find lasting fulfillment in the beauty of a gust of air or the vibrant lav lavender flower the guest party's guests they they consume the garden's beauty and keep moving you see some of them bowing down 
to smell uh, flowers, hmm, beautiful flowers. Mrs. Sheridan, despite earlier, uh, you know, telling that she uh, would only like to play the role of guest and nothing else, uh, and uh, um, she takes uh, full control over the party uh, and even uh, uh, brings um, uh, Laura with her. Uh, nevertheless, Laura's enjoyment does not prevent her from recognizing the band's labor and looking out for them by asking her father to get them drinks and presumably also a moment of rest to enjoy those drinks. So you will see the sensitive side of Laura and which is a stark contrast to that of Mrs. Sheridan. So there is an empathy in Laura. So she empathizes with the band. They have been playing for quite some time. She asks whether they can be given guests, the guests can be served refreshments. So they will get a moment's rest and also they can enjoy. Hmm? After the party, the Sheridans end up uh, in the marquee and um, or they sit in the marquee uh, and um, they, uh, this marquee itself uh, reflects so who built this marquee, who set up this marquee. Okay, though they have paid for it, who set up this marquee? The same marquee was set up by the hard labor of those workmen. So Maki reflects a sheltered and also uh, Maki again I, as I was give, telling you of the symbol it also reflects a sheltered nature of the Sheridans. They live in a sheltered uh, surrounding. So that's it for today. Thank you for listening. Uh, keep safe.